So here's a pretty ordinary run of the mill triangle, right? Now, if we want to find its area at the moment, a year seven or eight or year nine student or you guys only have one way to find the area of a triangle. We have one and one only formula for the area of a triangle. What is it? Um, <coughs> I'll give you a clue. It starts with a half. I think half, I heard it. Half, half, half cos c. Oh, um, sin c. Ah, now you're you're coming. You're you're a step forward, aren't you? Right. Uh, um, I'm thinking normally half base times height, right? Or B and H as an abbreviation, okay? Now that's the way that you would normally do this. You'll need some information here, right? For instance, you might call BC your base, in which case, where might the height go? Where would it go? We actually have a word for this, right? The perpendicular. It's gonna be the perpendicular here, we call it the altitude, right? So I'm actually gonna draw that in. Gotta be perpendicular in order for that to be the height. I'll call that H and I'll call this point that I've just made down here P for point. Okay? Now, just before I move on, we didn't have to make BC the base. I know it's at the bottom, right? But AC could be the base as well, or AB could be the base. You can make any of them the base. You just turn the thing around and you'll have a different perpendicular height. But just so we're on the same page, we'll keep with this one. Okay? Now, if I know BC and I know H, I can get the area. But just like we had before with the sine rule and the cosine rule, trigonometry allows us to work with this thing even when we don't actually know what this is. Let me show you how. Right? In this little triangle here on the left, what's it called? It's called uh, P. Triangle. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to pause for a second. I want this actually to equal something else. I'm going to call this C and call this B. Sorry for renaming. Okay. Um, so you called it ABB before, which is correct. I'm renaming it ACP. Now that triangle over there on the left is right angled, okay? So I can use all of my, you know, ancient right angled triangle trig in there. I can say in this triangle here, if this corner is called capital B, I would normally name this length lowercase, lowercase b, small b. Okay, good. So I could say, for instance with sine, I could say sine of this angle over here in the left hand corner should be opposite on hypotenuse. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Opposite on hypotenuse. So that's just H over B, right? And the reason why that's useful is because now I can make H the subject. It should be B sine C. And just like with simultaneous equations, if you can make something the subject, you can get rid of it from any equation where you need it, right? Instead of saying height, I can say B sine C, right? I can, I can substitute it out. So let's just do that, right? I can say, therefore, the area of my big triangle, which is A, B, C, that's half base times height, but I'm going to say what the base is and what the height are in this particular triangle. Half, I'm calling the base this bottom length, right? CB. Now, I can call it BC right? or CB, but being that it's opposite capital A, I'm just going to try and be more concise and just call it little a. Okay. There's my base, and I just worked out what the height was, right? It's b sine c. b sine c. And that's it. That's not too complicated, is it? Okay. Now, the beauty of this guy is now, you remember we said, oh, we would need to know the base and we'd need to the height. I don't need to know the height anymore, right? I can just get rid of this out of my diagram now. I can go back to my original triangle, no constructions required. I just need to know two sides and an angle. In a similar way that I need to know like two sides and an angle to solve some of these, right? And that's it, area of any triangle, okay? Let's quickly do an example. see, just like with the sine rule or the cosine rule, you're looking for particular pieces of information. Okay? Um, because you've got sine here, an easy way to recognize it is you have two sides at an angle, which is usually what you're expecting for the sine rule. Okay? 
thing. So I can use these pieces of information to work out, instead of another angle, I can work out the area of the thing. Okay? So let's quickly give this a go. I'm going to start by saying area equals half A, B, sine C. It always has a nice ring to it. It's very easy to remember. Okay? So here are my A and B. Right? They're the two lengths that I have in my triangle. Now it's really important that you recognize, right? C, C is not just any angle in the triangle, okay? It has to be the one in between A and B. It's got to be that one in between, 71 degrees. Just like you can see in the triangle we started over here, here is A, here is B, and sine C has to be the one in the middle. Or if you remember what we called it before, the included angle. Okay. Um, if it were this side, that'd be like, sorry, this angle, that'd be sine A. Or if it would be this angle, it'd be sine B. You're going to get something different. Okay? So it must be half A, B, sine C. And from here, I'm just crunching numbers again, aren't I? Okay. Um, half times, oh, gee, I don't know, uh, 6.5 by 8.5 sine 71. You're obviously going to need a calculator for this part. Let's do it to one decimal place. That'll do it. Approximately equals to, someone got it there for me? Center. Say again. 52. 52 point? Uh, 52.2399. 2399. So I'll do that to one decimal place. And it's an area, so what are my units? Centimeter squared. Centimeter squared. Square <laughs> centimeters. Dunskis. Really, really simple. Okay. Um, in some ways, area is kind of like, ah, oh, this is not that hard of a thing to calculate. It is, in some ways, easier than the sine rule and the cosine rule. But, as I'm about to show you, it's really one piece with all of the 5.3 trig that you've already done. 